Excellent stuff. Well, um, welcome to Real Talk for Rock Feedback. Thank you very much for Thank you, for spending Real time. Talk. Are yeah. you sure it's going to be Real Talk? Absolutely. Well, let's, let's aim for it. Because, because you see, I'm just going to vent for a second here. <laughs> um, I did an interview with a paper in Scotland. It was a whole complete interview. Talked about the album, talked about are we going to tour, talked about the last tour, how the show in Scotland was great, thank you very much. Talked about all these things. And then at the close of the interview, we were going to say goodbye. And the, and the interviewer said, um, I can't remember her name now. What, is, uh, what do you think about, um, oh, me, you moron. <laughs> you know, the Scottish woman from X Factor. Um, uh, Subo, Su- Susan Boyle. Susan, yeah. What do you think about Susan Boyle? I said, oh, I said, I really don't know that much about her other than the fact I know she sold a lot of records real fast. And I said, the only thing I know about her is just what I've read. And I've read about her brother saying that he's worried about her. And I've worried. And I saw other articles that said she had a problem with uh, coming in second or doing something. And I, I said, I think she's fairly fragile. And I think if she's going to be involved with this business, they need to take really good oh. care of her. I said, I, you know, it's like she likes to sing, and that's great. And, and, but I think you need to take care of her. And I said, and so I believe Simon Cowell is kind of handling her. And I said, well, Simon Cowell needs to take really good care of her. Mm. Then they said, well, what do you think about these shows? And I went, oh, man, what do you think about these shows, like X Factor? Uh, and I said, well, they're okay. I mean, people like to watch them on TV. And, and in the case of Susan Boyle, that you know, they sold some records because she got worldwide attention and YouTube. And I said, I understand this, the, the empathy and the attraction that an audience would have to Susan Boyle and wanting her, you know, wanting her to succeed and wanting her to feel good about it. I mean, I got that, and I said she was on Dancing with the Stars. She sang pretty good, and um, he said, "What do you think of American Idol?" And I said, "Well, uh, I'm going to tell you the whole story. This is all one interview about the album, and this is just a little ending." And I said, "Well, American Idol." I said, "I think Simon Cowell is a very smart. I think he's very intelligent. I very. I think he's in time. I think he understands timing of things and how these kind of things work." And I, I said, some of the things he says, the contestants are fine. Except for when he starts giving him stage directions. I said, the man should not give stage directions because he's never been on a stage in his life and has no clue. Other than that, I think he's great. End of article. Okay. <laughs> From that one thing has come. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cow. Not the article. Just that. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cow three times. Three different places around the Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Meatloaf wants to hop on the Susan Boyle bandwagon. I don't even know what that means, but yeah. In other words, in other words, she's had success, so yeah. I want to try to attach oh, yeah. myself to her for yeah. ride her coattails yeah, for course. success. Yeah. Um, and it just kept going. There's a there was ten different articles about Susan Boyle and Simon Cowell. They, 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 you never saw another repeat of any of the Hank Cool Teddy Bear stuff. It was all about <laughs> meatloaf worries about Susan Boyle. <laughs> what the? What the I, I couldn't even remember her name just like now. What's wrong with you humans? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> okay, because... They've been talking about me going on American Idol, right, over there to promote yeah. Hankel Teddy Bear. And I went, well, you bastards. Oh, that's really going to be a good way for me to get on American Idol. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Every record's always had that wall of sound. It's always been based around that Spectre thing. And I've tried to get away with that, and everybody just wants me to keep doing that. And then they have those stacked Todd Rundgren background vocals, which were what was on Bad Out of Hell, and I go, let's not do that. And then they get stuck. Okay. Everybody always goes along and goes, okay, we won't do that. And then they go, well, let's do that now. And they get these backgrounds and they do that. And, it, uh, and that's what's gone on. 
Rob, I said to Rob, I don't want to do this wall of sound. He goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> I said, I don't want those stacked backgrounds. Oh, thank you. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want it piano driven. I don't want that. Perfect. You're in the right space at the right time. And that's what I got. Well, that's good because those records exist. You know, why, why, there's no need to repeat them. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, an I, intelligent <laughs> human being walks the earth. I, I, I have a phrase that we walk around, I see dumb people. Finally, an intelligent human being. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Now I know there's three of us. <laughs> Good. Well, an achievement all round, I think, there. Also, we should go drinking sometime. Or not, or not. Maybe no, we shouldn't that, do that. See, let's that would ruin that. Yeah, yeah, let's, that. Yeah, let's, let's leave that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, with your life, which is full of, like, kind of... It's almost like there's a lot of folklore attached to it, because obviously, the, you know... I mean, No kidding. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that it's so... Really? Yeah, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> But sifting through your life, it's impossible to sometimes deduce what is real, what is, what's not true, and, you know, and all these sorts of things. Um, so with that in mind, you know, when, when you look at the media, is it something that you've happily contorted at will to sometimes fall in your favour, or has it always been, like, something that you can't control, do you think? Do you mean, have I perpetuated some of these stories? Well, I, I don't and know. allegations? <laughs> uh, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it did sort of start, start happening in 1977. Mm. Uh, and yes, I did perpetuate a few of them. I perpetuated ones about my age, when I was born, where I was born, how I got the name Meatloaf, because I just didn't find any of that relevant. Yeah. I, I, just, I just thought, who cares? Why? And this is, I still am going to, I'm still going to say this. What difference is my name make? What difference how old I am, what difference what shoes I wear, what pants I wear, what, uh, you know, um, I'm not wearing my Christian Dior today, I must be fucked up, um, uh, what perfume I'm, what difference as long as the album is good, the movie is good, wh who cares about, why? Why should anything else make a difference? If I, if I deliver, if anybody delivers good music, that's what it should be about. It should be about the music. If I deliver a great performance in a film, that's what it should be about. If I deliver, if the film delivers a great performance, that's what it should be about. I've changed my passport now. Just last week, I am really only 19 now. <laughs> Why not? I, I took them, it took the people at the passport office a little convincing, but it's on my passport that that I, I was born in 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 ninety one, and, and uh, so there it is. See, nineteen ninety one. It says it as well. That's not. And uh, I was born in ninety one, so I'm nineteen now. Wow. And, was uh, 19 a good year originally? Well, I just figured that Hankel Teddy Bear would be much more accepted if I'm 19. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I perpetuated a lot of stuff because when I was doing theater in New York, I would do little interviews like the West Side TV Times. Woo-hoo! <laughs> and, uh, and do little, you know, little interviews. I think I did one for The Village Voice a long time ago about Shakespeare. And what was interesting... And I had to confess to him I'd never read Shakespeare, but who cares? And, um, and so they didn't say to me, they didn't ask me the question. I'll show you the article. They never asked me the question. So they just said, well, today we're talking to Meatloaf. And they never said one time, how'd you get the name Meatloaf? Mm. And I don't remember. I worked with Rob Julia, with Mary Beth Hurt, with Tim Collins, with Seth Allen, with Ron Silver, uh, Oh, on and on and on and on. All stage actors, you know, that you would know. They were legitimate stage actors. Big stage actors. Uh, Tony Award winners, almost all of them. And they may have said behind my back, why do you think they call him Meatloaf? But nobody ever came up to me and said, so what do we call you? Yeah. What do we call you, Meat? What do we call you? The first interview I did for Bad Out of Hell, the very first one, yeah. the first question was, so how'd you get the name Meatloaf? 
Yeah. Who cares? In a weird way. Really. And I went, and I, and I remember my exact answer was, dude, this is rock and roll. Why do you care? What, what difference does it make? And then I proceeded to tell him, look, I've done all this theater. Nobody asked me that. You got, and now I'm in a, in a world where, you know, there's people called the Grateful Dead. And there's people called Bonzo Dog Doo Wah Diddy Band. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the Blues Magoos. There's, it's like, and you want to know where Meatloaf came from? What, what kind of lame question? That's the way to start my rock and roll career. No, talk about the album, damn it. And so... Um, you must have been quite disappointed going from theatre where there was that kind of reverential respect about the art form and then suddenly it's like the, the sheer sort of like shallow depths, or not even depths, but yeah, like... Yeah, well, that's the... I come from the thing where, where it's about the, the art form. It, and it doesn't, you know, it's like... Because I'm... You know, at the age of 75, at the age of 80, if I could do a film... And I, I, I could make it work. I could win an Oscar. And nobody would go, they might go, at the age of 80, he gave that performance. Oh. I mean, but that's, it, it's not like a big deal. It's more like he gave that performance. If you're nine and you give a performance, you can win an Oscar. If you're 80, and they're, it, it's, yeah, they might go on and say, oh, he's 80 years old. That's fantastic. Look, I'm still working. <laughs> Yeah, no, but but it's a different way of saying it. Uh, so I, I'm having I'm having a little bit of trouble with the music industry. Mm-hmm. And one thing I was going to go on to was um, like the kind of people that are on the record. It's like it is like a film almost in a sense because obviously there is a very strong narrative. There's a concept to the record, but in as much that the people that are guesting on it are actors as well, or there are at least a couple on there that happen to be actor musicians. Yeah, Hugh so, Laurie and Jack Black. Did, did you find that that brought, as always in your career, that sense of theatre that you want to be a part of the process or in their performances, or was it never even crossed my mind that that's what we were doing? Okay, I, there, that that kind of thing did. And Jack Black is a friend. Yeah. We, I only. Because you're obviously in the Tenacious D film, weren't you? And stuff yeah, like that, so. but but I only the, the the reason Jack is on that song is because I said he'll sound amazing on this song singing with me. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything to do about well, Jack's an actor. The, that's the right reason. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie could play piano. I've got one song really that kind of has piano at the beginning. I said. Well, if you're going to get somebody to play piano, Hugh Laurie can play. Let's get Hugh Laurie. He's right here. Hugh! <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, it was nothing more than I had done his show, and I just thought, how cool would it, because I know he loves playing music. He has a band in Hollywood. I said, how great for both of us to have, for him to play on a record, and for me to have Hugh. And uh, Steve Vai, I, yeah. I mean, I just love Steve Vai, and this record, this whole kind of record was made for Steve Vai. I mean, but you don't, you, you know, let Steve Vai do Steve Vai records, but little pieces of Steve Vai on a record is really great. Uh, Brian's been a friend for 30 years. Brian, how, Brian came on this record as he called up and said, what are you guys doing? Can I come down and visit? I'd imagine yeah. Brian May is quite like that. Actually, I've met him a few times. He's a very nice guy. He's yeah, just, he's, he's great. He help. just wanted to know. No, he wasn't even coming to play. He just wanted to see what we were doing, listen, and and hang out. And it was me that brought up the thing. You want to play? Mm. Oh, I can't. <laughs> and Rob goes, "Well, I have the, uh, I have the uh, Brian May signature guitar here. It's just like yours. You do. <laughs> and I also have an amp. And Brian goes." Yeah, but my amp is... And he goes, oh, I know what you did to your amp. We did the same thing to that one once he starts playing. Eventually, he, he, I went out there, said, how you doing? He goes, me, me fingers can't move. I'm, I'm sort of like sounding like a, a Ringo, but that's okay. Uh, I was doing more Ringo. He's than, on that? <laughs> no, no. And, and, but he really couldn't move his fingers. Yeah, yeah. His fingers were like almost frozen. So I said, maybe you got a good part. <laughs> after all this period of time, after all the records you made, after all the bats, all of those things, all the people you collaborated with, all the appearances from Fight Club to, you know, to Rocky Horror, all those things, what's attracted you continually all the way through your life to the theatre and to music? Well, because... You you, you, because... because if, you're in, if, you're, if you're in this business, it's, you're riding the merry-go-round. 
these all had the the uh, vision of the riding the merry-go-round going for the brass ring. Everybody's heard it. They actually used to have those where you'd ride around and try to reach out and get a brass ring. And I'm on I'm on that 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 artistic merry-go-round trying to grab that brass ring. Hmm. And as long as I can't grab it, I keep going because the whole object is to move forward. I know in a merry-go-round this is a stupid analogy now. <laughs> How dumb of an analogy if I'm trying to move forward and I'm just going around in circles. I hate that analogy now. I'll never use that analogy again. I know, I got to go. But we're, the object is to move forward. Mm. The object is to really just keep moving forward to try to get better. And the minute you're satisfied or the minute, then it's time to go fishing. Mm, absolutely. Well, let's hope that day doesn't come. No uh, more merry-go-round. That's a stupid analogy. Who would have thought of that analogy? 